Shout out to Baby Smack. And shout out to all you Mac heads and maniacs. Today we're going to profile Willie Little Roscoe Mosley from Rolling Sixties. Lamont Mosley was born in Los Angeles, California on February 4th, 1968 to the proud parents Willie and Marsha Mosley. His mother Marsha came to California by way of Middletown, Ohio. Willie grew up with four sisters in the house on East 33rd Street between Griffith and Central Avenue. At a very early age, his grandmother nicknamed him Mighty Mook because the little kid was so strong. The family name would evolve to Mookie. That's the name he was most known by family and childhood friends. While on the east side, Roscoe attended Wildsworth Elementary and Carver Junior High School. Mookie used to like to watch wrestling, play basketball, wrestle, fight, do somersaults and backflips. He also flew roller pigeons and liked to ride bikes. Mook used to like to hang out with older guys, but he also liked to fight bigger guys. Mookie also picked up on Spanish while growing up on the east side from the Mexicans in the neighborhood. But in 1977, his parents were divorced, and in December 1981, Mookie and his family were moved to the west side in Catwalk Crip Gang Turf on 51st Street between Western and Normandy Avenue. The Catwalk Crips became or was a clique of the Rolling Sixties. This is when Mook first became associated with the Rolling Sixty Crips and checked into Horseman Junior High School before attending Crenshaw High School. Mookie's father lived just blocks away in 5-5 Big Time Hustler Hood where Mookie also had a younger brother by the name of Lamar. Pops taught Mookie how to become a man, work on houses, do plumbing, and electricity. Mookie became a damn good carpenter. Mookie used to like to race go-karts, build mini bikes, and ran with the local crips in the neighborhood. There was also a boxer in the area that would often train Mookie how to get down with boxing gloves. So on any given day, you might see Mookie sparring with the homies. And then one dismal afternoon, Mookie got into it with a local blood gang member, and the end result was a shooting. Mookie would go to California Youth Authority for the next four years. While in CYA, Mookie ran across Big Roscoe from Rolling Sixties. Roscoe was small in stature, just like Mookie. He said he seen Roscoe fight a guy twice his size and beat him so bad he never seen somebody beaten so bad in his life. And so after that, he took the name Little Roscoe. Little Roscoe first paroled in 1988. He paroled standing six foot tall with 19 and a half inch arms. And he wasted no time cashing in on the drug trade. He started to spend a lot of his time in the back hood, which is now referred to as the Overhills. 1989, he had his firstborn kid, his daughter Ashley. He would work his spot all day and do what men do, and then go home to his family at night. In 1989, Lil Roscoe and a couple homies came across a big lick. Off that lick, he purchased a 5.0 on gold Dayton's, Painted it a few times, bought him a cutlass, and bought his wife a car. He was a small-time hustler, but a big-time jacker. 
he was having things his way. He was one of the big gamblers in the neighborhood for a short period of time. Oh, man, we didn't gamble everywhere, man. We didn't gamble on the east side, Miss T's. We didn't gamble at Crawdads. We didn't gamble at Fast Eddie's Steakhouse. We didn't gamble at Calf Max, Jerry Green's, Philly Liquor, Cows. You name it, we played there. As a young teenager, Roscoe got hooked on tobacco. He experimented with cigars, but he became addicted to camels with no filter and bugler. He married his kid's mother, Dion, in 1990, and no matter where he went, he was always the life of the party. He liked to laugh and joke and have a good time. The older he got, the bigger he grew, and the more known he became, the game recognized him as Big Roscoe. Uh, you know, I took a lick, went to jail, did my time, came out, money wasn't like it was when I left. So I got out the game. Roscoe was always neatly dressed. He loved a barbecue. He could cook his ass off. He was a great cook. He loved the barbecue and host family events on holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, etc., etc. In his spare time, he liked to work on cars and rebuild classic swim bicycles. From time to time, he thought he was a hell of a domino player. But he was a great spade player. Especially in them jail tears, man. We was number one slanging them spades, man. You know, guys out there like Blink, you know, a uh, good spade player from Left May. You know, a little boy, folks try dude. Good spade playing dude. Uh, you know, a uh, whole lot of dudes. Brotherhood, you know, a whole lot of dudes. Uh, uh, little Johnny Ray. You know, we used to lock up in themselves, man, and play spades, man. You know, wasn't nothing else to do. Play 24-7, man. This dude used to come out, you know, on top. Roscoe went back to prison in 1991. He went through Tracy, Donovan, Tehachapi, and even Corcoran Shoe. By now, Roscoe was fluent in Spanish. He could understand when the Southsiders spoke over the tear, and he could also communicate with them in Spanish. While in Tehachapi, he learned yet another trade. The big homie CJ taught him arts, crafts, and hobbies. Roscoe made some of the best clocks in all the California prisons. When he got out, money was still flowing in South LA, but the game had changed. It was a new breed of crack dealers that took over. And a new three-strike law had taken effect. Oh, man, money was plentiful, man. You know, that's when the game was good. You know, you could still flip something and make something, you know. And then you had all kind of other gang popping before that strike thing. So, you know, crap games was plentiful. You go in the crap game, and if, if it's your day, you might win a meal ticket in a regular old backyard game, you know. Same token, if it ain't your day, you get your ass towed up. In 1994, Roscoe went back to prison for a violation for a carjack robbery. While being housed at Chino Institution for Men, he was called back down to the L.A. County Jail where they filed charges on him for kidnap and robbery associated with the Bunoit Benjamin case. After going back and forth to court for over a year, the district attorney offered Roscoe a plea deal in this three-strike case, which was 12 years with 85%. Roscoe took it and went to prison. Anyone that spent significant time around Roscoe or jailed or did prison time with Roscoe know one thing for sure. If he was your friend, he was going to have your back. He wasn't ever going to turn on you. Didn't matter what gang you was from or what your affiliation was. He was going to be there for you. And there was two things he didn't believe in. Running and snitching. Roscoe had two sons, Lil Mookie and Troy. No matter what he was doing or where he was at, he was always talking about his boys. He also had three grandchildren. Around 2010, Sko and his family moved to Compton in Treetop Piru Hood. It didn't matter whose turf he was in. He was going to always walk to the local store 
to get him a shot of Hennessy and some tobacco. One week after his 44th birthday, something very strange happened. It was after midnight when his wife called to say Mookie's in jail. He's never coming home. They're going to strike him out, and I think he got a murder. I thought I was having a nightmare. Like, what? Nah, ain't no way. And then a few hours later, I got a call from Roscoe confirming this. Who in the hell would want to kidnap Roscoe? I thought to myself. Roscoe's a jacker. He would do the kidnapping, not get kidnapped. And then to see it on CBS News blew my mind. CBS in Los Angeles reported that a 51-year-old man had died following a fight at a gas station in unincorporated Athens Village area. Two OGs, one reportedly from Compton, a member of the Crips, kidnapped and beat Roscoe. It all started in the Willowbrook area. He beat Roscoe repeatedly over the head with a metal pipe, busting Roscoe's head and knocking him unconscious. He took the keys and forced Roscoe in the car and drove Roscoe to an ATM on the 100 block of East El Segundo near Main Street. He told Roscoe he had a gun and he forced it into Roscoe's back and made him walk into the gas station to the ATM. Roscoe threw his hands in the air, screamed to get attention, and then turned around. And it's not just a saying, he beat the guy to death. He punched this guy in the head and choked him out until he died. Convenience store employees called 911, but when the paramedics arrived, the kidnapper was reported dead at 9.16 p.m. on a Sunday evening. After sheriff homicide detectives reviewed the surveillance tapes, they determined a second kidnapper fleed the scene. Detectives said these were two well-known gang members involved in the kidnapping. After their investigation, Sheriff determined that Roscoe was innocent and they released Mighty Mook, whom was given another shot at life outside of prison. In 2016, Roscoe got arrested again. This time, x-rays determined he had cancer, so they released him. Roscoe was in denial. He didn't want to admit that the cancer came from tobacco, so he blamed it on asbestos from working under houses with his dad. Some of his closest friends was there to spend time with him before he was admitted into the hospital. Roscoe was also a Nipsey Hussle fan. He loved to see the homie come through the turf. Some things just never changed. Roscoe loved the younger homies. Roscoe found himself in the biggest fight of his life and he fought like hell. Unfortunately, Roscoe would never make it home from the hospital. Willie Lamont Mookie Roscoe Mosley died August 30th, 2017 in Long Beach, California at the age of 49. He had a great home going. A lot of OGs pulled up to his funeral. Different generations, different sections of the hood. Roscoe will be missed. Rest in peace, Willie Little Roscoe Mosley. This is awesome.